Brother John, watchman for that great day. I'm here. I'm back. I haven't gone anywhere. We're still waiting on the 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 day that is soon to come. Um, I just want to thank you all for praying for me and um, thank you for your uh, for your blessings, for your financial support of this ministry. Um, without you guys, I don't know. I just would not be able to stay where I am. And God has me here. And he has planted me here, so it's in his hand, and it always goes according to him that um, I make it through and, and uh, am able to make other videos. So we're all uh, in the same boat, and we're, we're, a lot of us are struggling financially, and uh, some of us are having more tough times with health and everything else. I've been through the health thing, and uh, God has seen fit to bless me um, to help me out of whatever was going on with my body just some couple of months and couple of weeks ago. So I am getting better. I feel better. I feel stronger. And I'm thankful to our Father in Heaven that uh, He has blessed me with uh, health. So continue to pray for me. And uh, as you, I ask that you would consider uh, me as your, uh, uh, to support as well. Um, it's in your hands. It's in God's hands. And let the Lord uh, uh, be merciful unto each one that, that does. So, at any rate, I have a study here today that I believe you're going to find this to be uh, an amazing... Uh, uh, it came. It basically f came out of me like a fire hydrant today. I sat down this morning um, and started to write and... Uh, with the with the thoughts and the understanding that God has has given to me and I'm bringing it to you so here we go without further ado this is part one of a study that I call one will be taken the other left when will this event take place so let's start in Matthew 24 27 for as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now as for as far as lightning coming out of the east, we have a a reference as something coming out of the east in Revelation seven two, which says, I saw another angel ascending from the east having the seal of the living God. And as far as this relating to light shining, even unto the west, all right, those 144,000 that would be sealed will go forth and shine even unto the west, which is at that time the rest of the world. Okay, because we, we know this, that there's the east and the west, right? And the western uh, belief in religion and all that. So the eastern religion, the western, so the west is always the other part of the world. That's the west, you know. The, the east would be the, the, uh, the religious beliefs of the east. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. This seems to be talking about the second coming. And I've looked at this before and I've thought so I thought I'd look into it. So this seems to be re relating to just prior to Jesus the second coming, to Jesus coming the second time. All right, that's not the rapture, that's the second coming. All right, it's interesting. So we'll read on Matthew 24 28. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will be the eagles gathered together. There the eagles will be gathered together. The definition of a carcass, the body of a slaughtered animal, we can identify with this in Scripture. Revelation 5, 6 says, In the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain. And that there will be a, there and there amongst the throne and the, the, the elders and all that in the midst of that slain uh, one, the lamb. And there in that midst will the eagles be gathered together. 
So as far as eagles being gathered together, Isaiah 40, 31 tells us that those that wait upon the Lord, and by the way, brothers and sisters, we are the ones, the bride of Christ, all right, that are waiting for our groom, Jesus, to come and take us to his father's house for the marriage feast. So, those now waiting on our groom, all right, that's the ones that are waiting. Thus, when we finally have been taken to the father's house for the wedding feast and subsequent rest for a season, reference to Revelation 6.11, while at some point, uh, will, I'm sorry, will at some point about three and a half years or more likely 1,335 days after being given our white robes, will then, as it says in Isaiah 4031, listen to this, mount up, okay, mount up, like get on your horses, your white horses, all right, because that's how we're coming out of heaven, brothers and sisters, with white horses will mount up and the wings as eagles will mount up with wings as eagles all right so it's the idea of coming from heaven maybe mounting up on horses having wings of eagles i don't know but the idea is that we're coming out of heaven with christ back to earth okay so which brings us back to when is this time matthew 24 29 says after the tribulation of those days all right after the tribulation of those days. Those days being the first half of the seven years at around the midpoint. And what happens at the midpoint? Then at that time, right, at the midpoint, then at that time shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers, i.e. the principalities, of the heavens shall be shaken, cast down, if you will. And where do we find these principalities being cast down to the earth as the stars are falling? Revelation 12, 7. And there was war in heaven. Uh, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. Why? because the powers and principalities of heaven are being shaken. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So when does this happen? When Michael stands up. That's when it happens. Where in scripture is this? Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which is prince, principality, he's a good principality, which standeth for the children of thy people, the Jews. And there shall be a time of trouble. This is at the midpoint, a time of trouble at the midpoint. And why is that? There'll be a time of trouble at the midpoint as the devil is cast out. Why? Because the devil is cast out of heaven. There's no place found for him anymore, and he's cast out to the earth. And it says, such as never was. This time of trouble will be such as never was, brothers and sisters. It's different than, than uh, right after the rapture. It's going to be even worse than that. Okay? Now, if you watch this, it says, so, and at the time, uh, and at that time, all right, that's when Michael stands up. At that time, thy people, the Jews, the woman of Revelation 12, being ready to be delivered from the son of perdition, shall be delivered. You see, when does this happen? It happens at the midpoint. Every one that shall be found written in the book. Okay, this is important because this is for the children of thy people. Michael stands up, who is, uh, you know, over the Jews, all right? He's, he's going to take care of those that are the children of thy people, the Jews. All right. So when does all this happen? Well, according to Matthew 24, 29, it happens immediately after the tribulation of those days. What days are these? 
those days that lead up to the midpoint. How do we know this? Because of Daniel 9.27. All right, this is the obvious. So he, this one that the Jews will accept in his own name, John 5.43, the one who they are calling the Messiah, who according to some rabbis is going to be here before April 9th elections, shall confirm the covenant, possibly the Trump peace plan, with many for one week, being the seven years. You understand the one week is seven years. There has been others that say that that's been already, you know, all right, that's their message. I'll leave their message where it is. But I believe that a seven-year period has to take place. That's what we're waiting for to, to, for this peace plan, you know, whatever is going to be said in the peace plan. And if it says something uh, about the division and it's all agreed to or confirmed, there it is. It is the peace plan, brothers and sisters. So that seven years is the peace plan with the many for one week being that seven years. And in the midst of the week, which will be in the middle, doesn't have to be exactly in the middle, but we always do that. We always go three and a half years, and three and a half years is seven, so therefore three and a half years is the midpoint. In the midst of the, uh, of the seven years, he, this Messiah, that the Jews have been following since the disappearances, get me, since the disappearances, because the Mashiach this Messiah, this false Messiah, cannot be revealed until, until the he that now letteth is removed out of the way. Then it says in chapter 2, Thessalonians, uh, verse 7, 8, 9, right in there, and then that wicked shall be revealed. All right, the departure comes first. The departure is the leaving of this place, the disappearances, all right? So after the, so the uh, this Messiah that the Jews have been following since the disappearances shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. In other words, all the things that the Messiah made possible for the Jews when he comes and is accepted, this very same one at around the midpoint or midst of the seven years will overcome and kill off any and all that will not worship him as God, and although this one will have the same look, at this point he will not be the same man as in the beginning of the seven years. For the Bible tells us in Revelation 9 that the spirit of the bottomless pit is able to come out, and the spirit this spirit is called the destroyer, Satan, Apollyon, Abaddon. This spirit will possess the man of sin, who at this point will become the devil incarnate. All right. Again, when will this happen? At the time when Michael stands up. Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. And so when the woman is ready to be delivered, all right, i.e. ready to accept, that she, the Jews, made a big mistake in who they believed was their salvation. And now, at the midpoint, when this man of sin has become the devil incarnate, they will see, and the blindness will be gone, um, and the fullness of the Gentiles is about to be come, as the fullness of the Gentiles is about to be come in. That's at the midpoint, all right? Midpoint, uh, 1,290 days to 1,335 is a 45-day difference within that period of time before the blessed day and before Christ returns. There's a, a mass slaughter for those that will not take the mark, all right? The first three and a half years, there'll be a period of time where everyone's, you know, able. But remember, the beast cannot uh, impose himself until he becomes the beast, until that spirit is let loose out of the bottomless pit and enters into the man of sin, making him the son of perdition, the child of hell. And at that point, he'll, he'll command people to worship him. And if they don't, that's when they, that's when they lose their head. All right. Now, there'll be things like that going on in the first three and a half years, most likely under these Noahide laws. I'll get to it. But 
the main thing is the blindness in part is upon the Jew until the fullness comes in. The fullness of the Gentiles will be after the first three and a half years. That's to the end of that, to the midpoint, just thereabouts, all right? So, uh, in other words, the Jews will be blinded by the essence of being given all that they desire for the first three and a half years until the midpoint. When someone, uh, when the same one that gave them it now takes it all away. See? The one that they accept that comes in his own name, he gives them everything. He gives them their temple, temple sacrifices, the oblation, this whole thing, uh, and, and sets up the new world order and, it, and, and pervades the laws, okay, over the whole world, all right? Until the midpoint. And that, that point is where rubber really meets the road. But we're not here for any of that, brothers and sisters. We're taken out. God bless us all. We're going home, brothers and sisters. This, we're in living in the moments of time before the rapture. You realize that? Nothing, nothing, not one sign has to happen before the rapture. The rapture can happen any moment now. Any moment. Now, it could be today, it might be next week, it could be a month from now, but it will happen in a space of time between now and the end of 70 years, all right? Remember, God does everything in the 70s, all right? Everything is a 70, uh, you know, 70 year prophetic uh, arrangement, all right? Remember, I'll go into other things later, but let me get through this. <laughs> going into too many bunny trails, I won't be able to finish the, the first part of this video. So the same one that gave them it, gave all of the things to them in this agreement, in this seven-year uh, agreement or a covenant, confirming it, at the midpoint, you know, causes everything to cease, right? So he takes it all away. So also, during this time, there will be those who are, who, those known as the tribulation saints, that will not adhere to the laws of, the seven Noahide laws, and I'm getting into this a little bit, that this Messiah will place on the world. And one Noahide law that will not be able to be adhered to is the law of idolatry. For the Jews, as well as the Muslims, believe there is only one God and his name one. So right away, God has only one name, Elohim, whatever, Yahweh, but they don't believe in his son, you see? So if you are gonna worship, you're gonna, uh, so if anyone that would worship the true savior and profess the name of Jesus or Yeshua is under that particular law called, uh, under that particular law called an idolater, which is punishable by death, by beheading. Thus, uh, those that were left behind who now realize that Jesus is the one and only way by evidence of many of the many that have disappeared all right at at the at that point will either start preaching the gospel in which if they do are going to lose their physical life and if they do not they will inevitably fall in line with the will of the accepted one called the messiah this will not be a joke. This will be a clear decision for all who will or will not take part in the messianic one world kingdom, which will be found to be false. A decision for Christ at that point will require your physical life for him, for Jesus Christ. If you are watching this video, <laughs> if you're watching this video, it's really time uh, <laughs> time is so short all right if you're watching this video brothers and sisters you know the Lord Jesus Christ that's great but someone that might come across this video they need to realize this so time is so short so make your decision for Christ Jesus today all right you guys that have not accepted Jesus Christ and his will for your life it's time to get right with Jesus your time is closing and believe me, you don't want to be here after the rapture, okay? Accept Christ today. Look forward to the escape that is promised. Look forward to uh, uh, 
the truth, the way, and the life. And that, that life God gives us much more abundantly. All right? That's what happens. So when you accept Christ, you humble yourself, come before Jesus, and, and before the, the finished work on the cross where he gave his life for you. That's, got, that's a simple thing to do, but it's hard. You know, most of us, before we're saved, we don't want it. We don't want it. We don't want it. But once we ask, once we come to the place where we come before the Lord Jesus and our heart is humbled and broken before him, and we ask him to come into our lives, that's when our lives change. And that, ask any Christian, any, any, anybody out in the world that calls themselves a Christian, ask them, as an unsaved person, ask them that what, what is it, what does Christ do for you? What, what is, you know, what is Christ to you? What is Jesus to you? You know, I implore you, those that might be unsaved at this time, that might have heard uh, the, the gospel and have rejected it, that might have heard it, that you need to be saved, look into it. Give it some thought. Pray to God. All right? Ask him. If you're unsure of things, ask him, and he will come in and save you. And he will come in. He says, I will never leave you or forsake you. I'll come into your life. I'll, he makes you whole. All right? What You don't have any idea what that means until you accept him as your personal Lord and Savior, and and it's it, it's speak, you're you're going to be speechless to explain what this means to you. The words are not enough to explain, uh, you know, what has happened to you. So, the opportunity is there for you today, and it's it's a simple thing, but you need to humble yourself and come before the mighty, uh, uh, Almighty God and ask him for forgiveness very simply in your own words and he will come in and he will bless you so back it up I'm backing it up to the to the important part of the video which basically brings us to the midpoint and the timing and how it will work because I see it as this that the blindness in in Romans eleven twenty five. The blindness in part is upon the Jews, until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. The fullness of the Gentiles will not be come in until the first three and a half years is fulfilled. Now that has nothing to do with the people that are waiting on the Lord and their bridegroom to come and rapture them. So. There is a rapture of the bride first. Then those who have not been in the in the place of uh, of having known Jesus, all right, those in the place of uh, indifference or uh, have not been born again that are calling themselves Christians today, all right. Those Christians are in line and if you are one of those Christians you will be a tribulation saint because you you have an outward appearance of Christ you relate to the gospel you can relate to Jesus on the cross but you've never accepted his sacrifice other than through a religious way now Jesus is not religion Jesus is relationship and this has been said many times that it's not about your religion, it's about your relationship. If you know Jesus personally as your Savior, it's more than a religious ceremony. But many just do it as a, uh, an outward appearance of their uh, Christianity. All right. So if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus today, I implore you to get your... Uh, uh, to read the Bible, open the Bible and read how much he loves you and what he's done for you and how he did it and what his promises are. All right? And that, that my friends, are, is, is, is what we all need to come to and accept. And once we see what he did and how much he loves us and what he promises us, then we know that there is an escape, that we're not going through a time of tribulation. 
not those who believe on his promises anyway. So, brothers and sisters, friends and family, if you're watching this and you don't have that relationship that with Christ and it's more of a religious way that you consider yourself to be saved by uh, a religious act, well, there'll be many in that day that say, Lord, Lord, didn't we do this? Or didn't we do that? Didn't we do this? And Jesus is going to turn and say to them, depart from me. I never knew you. To know somebody is personal. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you don't know him. Your relationship with the, with the, the Lord is a daily um, effort. All right, But it's not so much an effort once you know him, once you've asked him to come into your heart and save you of your sin. He does. And with the Holy Spirit in your life, he directs your footsteps. All right, Simple as that. So the, the other thing is that these tribulation saints, all right, they will be here during their, what you call the left behind. All right? It's the understanding of there is a rapture. Then those that are during the tribulation that will will have to lose their heads because that's going to be the law at midpoint. So it doesn't happen maybe directly, maybe a little bits and pieces over the months and, and years. Uh, in the first three and a half years, there's, there's things that will happen. But the law that will be enforced is the Noah-eyed laws. They will be enforced. So, re look up Noah-eyed laws, you realize you know, how serious this is going to be for those that are calling themselves Christians now. For those who believe that they have a relationship and yet do not have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And it, you know, to, to those out there that, that would say that you need to say his name, you know, Yeshua, all right, well, it's fine. And the thing is, you can say Yeshua, Jesus Christ, uh, uh, God with us, Emmanuel. You can say his name a hundred ways, all right, in your heart. You understand? You are saved by grace, and that is not of your own doing. It's not by works you are saved, but by grace. So remember that. None of us are good. No, not one. Not one. Only him, only Jesus Christ who died for each one of us personally gave his life so that we could be could fellowship with the Father and the Son and his Spirit. Because his Spirit is who, who lives in us. That's the he who is now letting. Okay, The he who now letteth lives in you when you ask Christ to come into your heart and forgive you of your sin. He sends the Holy Spirit. The he that now letteth comes. He directs your footsteps. He keeps keeps you and offers you gifts and things, okay, and your direction. And as you have that spirit in you, that he that now letteth is only here for a short time. And that time will probably only take up the rest of this 70th year. You understand? Because God judges in the 70th, all right? So... As far as Noahide laws are concerned, it's going back to the age of law. We're now in the age of grace. So these tribulation saints, after the rapture, people will realize, and these people will want to worship Jesus Christ, but it'll be a different time. It'll be a different time. It won't be, a, a, so to speak, churches that allow it anymore. All right? They're going to get phased out very quickly, I would imagine. Um, at least over the next three and a half years. And during that time, those three and a half years, the, the Noahid laws will become pervasive and, and they will fulfill the, the kingdom, this false messianic kingdom that comes before the second coming. All right? And it's, it's always that the lie comes before the truth. You understand? You understand that? The, the, the way the the uh, go back to the garden and so first God told them 
You know, all the fruits and everything were able, were, were given unto you to eat, but don't eat this, all right? Don't touch that tree, all right? Or you surely, and it, you know, the devil tries to make it like you're surely going to die. You're, he's saying you surely are going to die, right? But God wasn't talking physically. He was talking spiritually. But the devil said, oh, you will not surely die, okay? So he lies, all right? So the truth, then you get the lie, and then you get the, the man believes the lie, right? And there you go. So the man believed the lie, and he got cast out of the garden, and the whole thing has given us a 6,000-year period of time till the end, until the 70th year of the fig tree, you see? It all ties into an end point. And to finish this video without kind of rambling on here, the the um, 70th year really is uh, the hinge. All right, it's it's really the 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 time. If we look at it as a year, the 70th year. What Paul said in was it Second Thessalonians? I think it was Second Thessalonians. I can't remember where it is, but I, I believe it's in Second Thessalonians. Paul said that that day would not take us by surprise. All right? So the day for a year theory, right, idea, works out that that day or perhaps that year, that year will not take us by surprise. Why? Because it's the 70th year. All right? So that year... And something happening within that year will not take us by surprise. Do you see that, brothers and sisters? It won't take us by surprise because we're in the 70th year. We're all, all of us know that things of God happen in the 70th year. So that year will not take us by surprise. A day with the Lord is a thousand years. But if you think of it that way, you can look back to uh, Adam. And Adam lived to be how old? 930 years, 70 years shy of the day. You see? 70 years. It's, a, it's amazing how God works these numbers. He could have died at, 30, uh, at 931. He could have died at, you know, 980, okay? But it was 930 years old that he died, leaving 70 years. You see how that works? So, to make the day. David was 70 when he died, born and died on his birthday. So Enoch as well, I believe. At any rate, uh, David was 70, see? Um, the Israelites were uh, in captivity in Egypt for 430 years, leaving 70. See how it works? This is 70 is a, can be a balance or it can be in the year of 70, like, like when uh, the temple was destroyed in 70 AD. Everything relates to 70, brothers and sisters. We're in it. We're closing out the 70. Do we have to go to May the 14th, uh, 2019? I don't know. Uh, I don't believe anything has to come to pass for us to be raptured. I believe the rapture can happen any moment. It's just that we see the day closing out the time limit okay if you will for the time for the timing of 70 will end at the at may the 14th that will be the the day of 71 they will be then 71 years old so at the latest may the 13th if we had to go that far may the 13th 2019 all right there's a lot more to the picture as we all know the wars rumors of wars famines pestilences Earthquakes, it's all going to happen if it already hasn't happened. But it we're there, brothers and sisters. We're there. So I hope you enjoyed this first part of this study. I plan on doing a little more in-depth study on it. But um, it's a lot to it. Remember this. The, the midpoint is really when the woman who will be ready to be delivered, will then um, uh, flee into the wilderness where she has a place 
prepared for her for how long? 1260 days. So that's midpoint. She's not fleeing from, uh, from the one that they accept. You understand? The one they accept gives them everything they want. The woman is getting everything they want. And for three and a half years, they're, they're joyful and they're happy. They got their temple, they got their sacrifices, they got everything. There's the kingdom, the Messiah has come, and the kingdom is prevailing throughout the whole world. This is the new world order, all right? Messianic new world order, all right? Through this one king, all right? Becomes a whole kingdom. Remember, right, right now we're dealing with the political uh, country of Israel, and really it's going to become the kingdom of Israel which then expands throughout, through the laws, expands throughout the world, and it comes under one head, which will be this king, this Mashiach, this Messiah, which will be found to be false. Okay, But when will it be found to be false? At the midpoint. The fullness of the Gentiles comes in in a short little area of time after the three and a half years, and between three and a half year mark and the blessed day, 1335, that's when Christ returns, but that little bit of time, say 45 to whatever, 75 days, that's when it becomes a law. Remember, the abomination of desolation is set up, and it's a law that says those that will not worship uh, this Mashiach, this Messiah, as God. That's when, the, that's when the eyes of the Jews will be opened, brothers and sisters. That will be the time of the fullness of the Gentiles, be coming in, will be come in. Because they have that three and a half years. Remember, the beast doesn't even come out of the pit to take over, to kill the two witnesses, all right? Which is another story in itself, and that could be a further, another video. But if you get a chance, and I kind of um, acknowledge this, it's a very good video, very well put together, and it's biblically sound. And it makes a lot of sense. Not that I believe or or go along with everything this man says, but it's um, it's the Two Witnesses video. If you haven't seen it, I ask that you do watch it, and it's the original video, not part two. Uh, it's like 117 minutes, but well worth watching and understanding what he's saying really brings around who the Two Witnesses are, or very possibly can be, all right? And it's not two men. It's two bodies of people. It never says it's two men. That's the question. And that's what everyone gets into arguments about. And we could all argue about everything, right? But as far as uh, giving it a look-see and trying to understand where he's coming from and how it's... And when he lays it out, it's biblically um, uh, uh, laid out, all right? He gives it to you through the, through the scriptures. So a very important uh, movie called The Two Witnesses Movie and um, a blessing. It'll be a blessing to watch it, if nothing else, to get a little idea of what it could be, all right, what, or who the two witnesses could be, all right? It's not for those that are saying it's Elijah and uh, Moses. It's not for those. But then again, if you're open to something uh, to see how it fits, you can at least listen to the man, give him that little bit of time, and uh, he spent some time working on that, and it came out beautiful. What a great video it is. But it's called The Two Witnesses Movie, so check it out. And with that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave you with that. So be looking up, brothers and sisters. We know we're close. There's no, no lack of the brothers and sisters, watchmen, and the people with, having dreams and uh, offering encouragement. There's no lack of that today um, on YouTube. We have many YouTube videos and brothers and sisters to watch and to be encouraged by and I'm hopefully one of those so I love you I know the Lord loves you and I'll blow the show far and hopefully we will hear the real thing very very shortly sisters.
Brother John, Watchmen for that great day, out.